Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can use Power Query to extract random samples of data from a larger data set. So here I've got data for sales reps, products, quantities, total sales. And what I'm going to do is just pull random samples from each, from each store. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get this into Power Query. So to do that, go to the Data tab, select From Table or Range, and Excel automatically is able to detect my, my table. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to get it into Power Query. So step one is there. I've got it into here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to randomize this data because right now it's in a in a certain order and I you know if it was to be random I need to add a random number generator so I'm gonna click on add column and select the option for a custom column and now I'm just gonna type in let's say random and the function that I'm gonna use is called number dot random between and I'm going to type in, you know, one to a thousand, something fairly large and hit OK. And now you'll notice I've got this random number here. The next thing I'll do is sort this. The reason being is, you know, by just generating a random number, that's not going to do anything. I need to resort on that number. So to, to double check that this is working properly, you know, it's the first item I, I have here is a, a date of uh, June 11, 2021. So if I go back into here and go to the home tab and refresh, these random numbers will regenerate. And so I've got a, a different set of numbers. Now when I go here, I've got a date of August 29, 2021. So the data has been resorted. And so that randomization has taken effect every time that I, that I refresh the data. So the random number will regenerate. And then what will happen is that it will sort from smallest to large or whatever you want, largest to smallest, doesn't really matter. The point is it's gonna be in a, in a completely random format. And that's step two. The next step I'm gonna do is now what I'm gonna do is, is group these this data by, by store. So I'm gonna hit this button here to group by. And what I'm gonna group by is the is the store and I'm going to leave this as it is for now this new comment I don't really need this because I'm going to modify this in a second and so now I've grouped all the stores right now this doesn't look terribly useful but what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this formula here because what I want to what I want to do is create a, a, a table of these of these items within these different stores and assign them an index number so right now, when I sorted this, I, I did a count of, of the number of items for, for each store, which isn't really useful for, for what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is change this to be able to call it index. And instead of each uh, table row dot count, I don't want to do a row count. What I want to do is erase this and I'm going to say add an index column. Okay, and I'm gonna leave this each indicator here, put a comma, and then call this index. And I'm gonna delete that's what I have here. And then one comma one, because I wanna increment by one. I wanna start by, by one. And now I just wanna be careful in closing everything here properly. There we go. So now, now you'll notice now I've got this table. So I've got my index here. If I click on this table, you'll notice that all these items related to, to store H now, they all have an index number. So I've got 1 to 20. So the reason this is useful is now what I can do is expand this out. And I'm just going to grab, let's say I just want five samples from each store. This will enable me to do that. So although I've, I'm sort of shifting back and forth, I've, I've compressed everything, now I'm gonna expand everything back out again using this, using this button here. 
So I'm going to select everything, open it back up, and now what I'm going to do is I've got these index numbers that you'll notice reset for each group. So it goes all the way to 104 because remember there's about 100 per store. Now it goes back to one and and so on. So if I want the first, let's say, five samples from each store, just five samples, what I can do now is run a filter here and say less than or equal to. So less than or equal to five. Hit OK. And you'll notice now I've got one, two, three, or five, which are repeating all over again. So store C has five, store A has five, store D has five, and so on and so forth. So just like that, I've created a sample. And what I can do is sort this by saying just to make it a bit more clear. So I've got A, then B, then C, then D. So just like that, I've created a sample of you know five, five items from each one of these. So if you wanted to do a random sample from your data set, this is how you could do that. So I'm going to close and load and refresh this data into here. And so now I've got these dates. So I just want to reformat here. And so now what can happen is if I wanted to do um, a, a, another random sample, I didn't like the one I want, it's as easy as doing a refresh. So I can just right click, refresh. And so let's pay attention. So May, May 1st to this one here. And now you see, now I got a completely random sample. Don't like it? Refresh it again. So just like that, you're replicating all these steps without having to do the painful process of doing it yourself. Because with Excel, it's go with uh, with Power Query, sorry, it's repeating those steps every single time you refresh the query. So let's just go back quickly, uh, do an overview of this, and I'll leave um, a link to a post describing this process. So if you want to follow along more closely. I'll leave a link in the description. So we started with the, the source. We we added the, the random number. And then this, this is an important piece to sort it again. Because just adding the random number isn't going to do anything on its own. It needs to be resorted after that. Then group the values. And then creating this index number for each one of these. So it iterates through each one of these. So, you know, it goes down to, you know, however many items are in there. Then we expanded it back out, and this time we've got all those index numbers related to these individual stores, and then filtered, in this case, anything that's less than or equal to five, and then resorted. So this way it ensures we're just getting five samples from each store. And then because it's set up in Power Query, all these steps are going to be saved so that you can reuse this query over and over again. So you can right-click refresh, or you can go to the Data tab, hit refresh all, you know, keep on randomizing until you've got a sample that you like. So that's the beauty of being able to do it through Power Query. It's sort of like a macro recorder where it's going to save all the steps you're doing. So if you need to pull a sample size for whatever reason, whatever data set, this is how you can do that. So hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.